Hafadeh, welcome to D18 tonight, the first of many more of our election shows to ensure you're informed before heading to the polls. Our show is completely interactive, so if you're watching us on Facebook, send in your questions and we'll ask them to our candidates. Joining us in studio are your senatorial candidates, Republicans Roland Blas and Ben Servino and Democrat Jose Terlahi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll begin by giving each of you 30 seconds to introduce yourselves. If you can start with you, Roland. Buenas and half a day. Yes, I'm Roland Bloss from the beautiful village of Zotnia, and this is my third time running, and I still have that heart, the passion, and the love to serve our island and our people, and I'm ready once again. Hafadeh, my name is Ben Servino. Um, my real name is Benito, and most people know me as Ben. Born and raised here in Dedido, and this is the second time that I'll be running under the Republican banner. Okay. Thank you. My name is Jose Tovis Terlai, also known as Pido. I'm from Zonia, and this is just about the third time I'll be running in this political uh, journey. Uh, I ran for lieutenant governor one time, I ran for senator, and hopefully I can uh, be victorious this time around. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so let's start with our first set of questions. And again, you each have 30 seconds to respond, and we'll start again. Uh, with you, Roland, for this question. Tell us, what is your educational background and community service organizations or projects that you've been involved with to help improve our island? Well, I went to school in the US, came to Guam, and when I came here, my first job was I worked for a senator, and I have the well experience and passion in community outreach, helping people, resolving issues, and I took care of many, many constituents that came in about 10 senators that I've worked for. And they always appreciate my work because they all, the senators I work for always say to me that you always resolve all issues of constituents coming into the office. And I'm ready to become that senator to resolve. Okay, Servina? I actually have a degree in, um, an AA degree in architecture. I also have a bachelor's degree in graphic communications and a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling. Um, I'm actually a member of the Dedido Municipal Planning Council, the Lions Club, the Hi Harmo Harmony Lions Club, and I'm also uh, a member of the Young Men's League of Guam. Okay. Mr. Shalahi? Your educational background, Mr. Shalahi, and uh, some of the community service organizations or projects? I have a dub double major. Uh, I have a, a BE. Uh, uh, bachelor of Art degree in uh, public administration and also in police science. I've been a mayor uh, for 12 years and I served in the police department and all my life I've been involved in, in public service. Not only with the mayor's council but also uh, uh, with different people and different organizations and supporting them in, in ways that they need me to, uh, to, to support them. Okay. Now we'll go on to our next question here, right to it, something that a lot of the voters would want to know from each of those running for public office is what would be your top priority if elected as a senator in the 35th Guam legislature? And we'll start with you, Mr. Servino. You know, I'm very concerned about accessibility in the community. I'm known as an advocate for people with disabilities in the community. So I want to try to ensure that all our programs and activities that are offered to the community are equally accessible for all people especially those with disabilities. So I want to, again, reinforce the issue of ADA compliance and equal access. Okay. And Mr. Blas? Yes, if I'm given the opportunity, um, my platform is healthcare, senior citizens, and culture. And I want to assure that uh, in the healthcare, that uh, if I'm allowed a seat, that um, uh, to assure that um, I would like to introduce a bill that all funding for the hospital should also from now on be just for the hospital and not transferred to be utilized to any other agency. So we have to fix our hospital. We gotta assure that we have the finance and that all funding for the hospital should remain for the hospital. Definitely a topic of amazing yes. headlines most recently and Mr. Shalahi. Yes. We've been hearing a lot about the financial crisis in our government. And uh, you know, my, the first legislation that I will introduce is to introduce a uh, a uh, suicide prevention program. Why is that? Because, you know, Guam has been on the top of the list as having the most suicide on the island. 
And that's going to be my first legislation. And also, I would like to uh, be a part in growing the economy uh, to uh, take care of our financial problem. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Well, that's the first round going here. We want to get to some of the questions from our viewers on Facebook as well, but it's time for a quick break. D18 continues in two minutes. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Why turn a meal into a snack when you can turn a snack into a meal? A three cheese blend pico de gallo, double the marinated steak and a medium drink. At least they're cute. Taco Bell's new steak nachos box. It's kind of a big meal. A beautiful, healthy smile is an expression of confidence. The more confident you are about your smile, the more likely you are to fully express your feelings without having to worry about the way your teeth look. Before cosmetic dentistry, I didn't smile as much. I didn't have the confidence, and it shows. And since I've had cosmetic dentistry done, I feel 10 times more confident. I make my initial introduction and with a nice big smile and a handshake and I just you know feel like it really is a relationship builder a nice warm smile and it makes the clients and customers feel more comfortable with you feeling confident and they feel that you're not just there for business that you're also there kind of as a friend as well so I mean it's amazing how powerful a smile can be a good smile <laughs> since your smile makes a significant impression on those around you it is important that it makes the impression you want it to make. Welcome back to D18 Tonight. We're taking your questions on Facebook Live. With us in studio are senatorial candidates Roland Blas, Ben Servino, and Jose. Talahi, how you doing, gentlemen? Doing fine. Buenas. Okay, so we're waiting for some of the uh, people in here to, to, that are watching us on Facebook Live to give us some questions and feedback. But meantime, we have more questions uh, for you as candidates. Where do you stand on the issue of raising taxes? And if you don't support raising taxes, what are your ideas to generate revenue? And we'll start with you, Mr. Well, Tom. let me just start off with the sales tax because that's the main issue right now. And you know they should roll that back. And they should think about the uh, insurance institution, the medical insurance institution, uh, they need to check and make a research on the bank because, you know, the insurance institution, the medical insurance institution, uh, they generate about $250 million a year, and they don't, they don't pay tax, they don't pay GRT, they don't pay cooperate dividends, they, don't, and they get, you know, uh, 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 they don't pay... Uh, uh, premiums, and they even get a, an abatement on their property tax. So we need to research on all those things and do away with, with, uh, with the, the sales tax, tax right? because the it's going to impact discussed. Our, our community. Okay. Mr. Boz? Yes. Um, you know, I don't believe in raising taxes, but I'm sure there's other avenues and ways that we can look into and do a little bit more research on different areas that we can seek avenue, uh, revenues to help us uh, within our government and uh, different agencies, especially um, health care, our public schools, and public safety. And there are ways, but we must all come together and work together to make it happen um, than just raising tax. And it's enough already with, with people trying to struggle to live day by day. Have that discussion. All right, Mr. Savino. You know, the issue of sales tax and raising the sales tax is a very controversial issue, especially here in Guam. People are not used to that. In the states, that's how they're able to fund their infrastructures, the roads, improve the roads and everything. So it's something that's uh, acceptable in the mainland. Here in Guam, it's going to take time for people to adjust to that. We really need to look at other ways of generating revenue mm -hmm. and being creative and innovative and looking at public-private partnerships so we can, uh, again, look at building our economy. And marketing Guam is the number one tourist destination for people with disabilities, and that will help increase our economy. Okay, so this next question comes to us from one of the, our viewers on Facebook Live, 
uh, from a Jericho Tobias. His question is, how would each of the candidates address the issue of rebuilding Simon Sanchez High School with their prioritized matters uh, pertaining to education? We'll start with you, Mr. Blas. Simon Sanchez, hi. Okay, uh, on that issue, of course, again, a lot of it has to do with the funding in uh, rebuilding our schools. But um, whatever it takes, and I'm allowed a seat in the Guam legislature, I will push and make sure that uh, we will all work together to make this happen because it's for our children, the next generation, our education is more, is priority. So we, we have to come together, work together, and, and assure that our school is built and rebuilt and, and maintain as well. It really takes a lot that they need to maintain to make sure that the schools um, will, uh, um, again, we'll uh, progress. progress for the next okay. uh, years to come, yes. I don't think we, we're, uh, we can afford waiting for uh, the, uh, the uh, restructuring of the Simon Sanchez School. I think the governor needs to go in there and do a, an emergency declaration so he, he can have that authority to move money around to support the school financially. That's all that I can say about this. Okay, Mr. Sabrina, Simon Sanchez High and education as a whole. You know, Simon Sanchez High is a really old school. Really need to, to be honest with you, build a whole new school yeah. and not yeah. do it piecemeal. And look at, look at it comprehensively and work on the procurement process so it can be easily be, uh, again, understood by everybody else. We don't have any uh, protests and expedite that process. Sure. All right, guys. Well, more questions still to come here on D18 tonight. Keep it here. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. On my last day at the court, I was presented this jar of post-its. During the presentation, they told me, they said, Josh, we asked every single employee to write down a word that best describes you. They must really believe it's an important thing that they need to share with me. So it's quite humbling when you see, you know, what people think of you. Professional, leadership, visionary, articulate, dedicated, admirable, caring. It meant to me that people that worked for me were very happy with my leadership. They were very thankful for my leadership and they were impacted by my leadership. I want to serve as a lieutenant governor because the skill sets, my experiences and my energy, and this is an opportunity for me to help push a vision. That's the reason why I'm willing to take a risk and run for office. We only have 30 seconds to describe the newest specialty flavor in the Signature Crafted Recipes Collection by McDonald's, Garlic White Cheddar. It's layered with a slice of smooth, perfectly melty white cheddar cheese, a crunchy medley of tasty crispy garlic chips, a dramatic drizzle of smooth, delicious, and flavorful, delectably creamy garlic aioli, all come together with a mouth-wateringly juicy tomato slice and crisp iceberg lettuce atop crispy buttermilk chicken on a soft, warm artisan roll. <sighs> Luckily, you can take all the time you need to savor every bite. The Signature Crafted Recipes Collection by McDonald's. Welcome back. Well, let's jump right into our next round of questions. This question coming from our Facebook viewer, um, John McDermott. Their question being, where do you stand with recreational marijuana? And we'll start with you, Mr. Zavrina. Oh, recreational re marijuana. You know, that's something that should be secondary to, again, medicinal marijuana. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't see that as a major issue right now. I want to focus on, we haven't even implemented the medical marijuana bill. Right. I'd like to see that go for it first before we even consider looking at recreational marijuana. Okay, Mr. Boss? Yes, uh, I agree the medical uh, marijuana is very important because it saves lives. And there's a lot of people, especially with cancer, as doctors say that it's something that will give them time frame to live longer. Uh, recreational, it's not something that I really had uh, thought of. I, I know there's a lot of, I spoke to a lot of young adults out there that are hoping that one day it just becomes legal, but mm -hmm. on that matter, I would uh, be concerned and focus more of our medical and come, come to some uh, uh, better idea and system that we can start issuing it out and giving it out to save people's life, uh, lives with medical issues, especially cancer. 
Okay. It's July. Yes. Well, let, let me just say that, you know, I, 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 at one time I was in charge, uh, I was the commander for the narcotics division. And let me just say about uh, medical marijuana, I fully support. The people have spoken already about that. And even social marijuana, the people have spoken. So I'm one person that follows the will of the people. And I have some reservations on social marijuana, though. The tetrahydrocannabinol, the active ingredients of marijuana, you know, it, marijuana is a downer, but it does have some effect if you mix it up with alcohol. Okay, so the pros and cons to, to that, of yeah. course. And so this next question, uh, pretty simple, coming from Janessa Talahaith. Given the opportunity to serve in the legislature, what committee would you chair and why? And we'll start with you, Mr. Blas. Um, if I'm allowed a seat, um, I would like to chair health care, uh, senior citizens, and our culture. I'm one also that speaks fluent Chamorro, um, read and write, mm -hmm. and I just want to remind to keep our culture alive within our schools as well, and nonprofit organizations, and the health care, which is the most priority right now. Um, I've experienced myself being a patient, so I know the struggles, I know the experience, and I know a lot of it has to do with the finance. And with that said, uh, you know, I'm ready to help our people okay. in those areas. July. I want to chair law enforcement since I've been, I've been a police officer for 18 years, and I've been a mayor. Uh, I want to chair the, the law enforcement uh, uh, agency, and I also want to take care of uh, being charged of ways and means, because I want to really restrict the uh, abuses of, of government funds. So uh, I want to be strict on that, and I want that to... Uh, uh, if they can give me that, Ways and Means Committee, I'll be glad to uh, take it. Okay. Servino. I Like Roland, I really prefer being the chair of the Health Committee. And as we look at health, that's a main priority. Uh, I want to have uh, the opportunity to have uh, oversight purview on a lot of the agencies like public health, behavioral health, DISIT, even the Veterans Administration, because that all falls within that health committee. And I'd like to ensure that they get uh, their needs addressed to this venue. Okay. And uh, this next question coming from Andrew Bainham. Uh, we'll start with you, Mr. Shalahi. Are you willing to right-size this government even if it means reducing jobs? Well, the thing is, I don't believe in reducing jobs. I believe in the potential of the employees, training the employees and making sure that the employees are taken care of. I don't believe in reducing jobs. You know, we need employees. Even right now, we need, we need more employees, especially the police department. We need more employees to do the job. You know, you don't have to give them a high salary, but give them trainings and make sure that we take care of the, the, uh, the things that we need to do for our, our community. Okay. Serena? Oh, uh, as far as uh, the employees and the staffing patterns, I think, you know, the government can also streamline some of them the staffing patterns, but we do need more employees. As you look at revenue tax and the complaints that we don't have enough manpower to process all the, the returns. We look at GSA, you know, all the government agencies, the police department, they're short of manpower. We really need to look and prioritize where the staffing patterns are increased. Okay, Mr. Box. Yes, reducing employment in the government of Guam is not the answer. For me, I, I look at it more that um, customer service is one issue. Uh, a lot still needs uh, some guidance in that. In areas that they take, they hold supervisory uh, level also um, should uh, be monitored and, and, you know, just to make sure that each agency, that everyone's working and doing their job and their responsibilities and professionally and also customer service is one of my main uh, concern and, and we need to keep our government uh, flowing and continuing in providing the services needed. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your responses. Thank We're going to take a quick break. Remember, this show completely interactive, so if you have questions, post it now on our Facebook live stream. Keep it here. D18 continues after the break. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. You guys are back there. <laughs>
Enjoy Eats on the Streets at the 6th Annual Guam Barbecue Block Party. Head down to Pleasure Island Tumon on Saturday, July 7th from 5.30 to 10 p.m. for live entertainment, a classic car show, hot diggity dog, hot dog eating contest, and see who will win the island's biggest barbecue competition. Admission is free. This GBB signature event is presented by T Galleria by DFS, Plaza Shopping Center, Outrigger Guam Beach Resort, and Ducatani Guam Resort. Making Guam a better place to live, work, visit, and barbecue. Why turn a meal into a snack when you can turn a snack into a meal? A three cheese blend pico de gallo, double the marinated steak, and a medium drink. At least they're cute. Taco Bell's new steak nachos box. It's kind of a big meal. Back to D18 tonight. We're getting close to wrapping up our show, but up next is our exclusive digital show, The After Party, with Sabrina Salas Metzanani and Chris Barnett, and this week's analysts, Roy Respicio, Fernando Estevez, and Callan Perez. But first, let's ask one more question to our candidates, or a few if we have more time, that, uh, about them running for the legislature. How are you doing, gentlemen? I'm doing fine, We're thank doing you. Okay, so this next question, we'll get right to it, uh, coming from... Uh, Adriano Kitagua, there. What are your thoughts on the military buildup? And we'll start with you, Mr. Chalahi. I support the military buildup. With all this financial crisis, we need the military buildup. You know, I'm a retired military, and I, you know, I learned a lot from being, you know, with the military, and I support the military buildup. Otherwise, if we don't have the military buildup, then our finances, uh, growing the economy, is, is going to be hard for us. So we need that, uh, the Section 30 money, for example, and uh, uh, other funds that is supposed to be uh, given to Guam. You know, we need the military buildup so that we can be recognized by the whole world that, you know, we support the military. Okay. Mr. Boss? Yes, I truly support the military buildup. I mean, they've been around. We've been under the U.S. And again, you know, it will bring more um, uh, revenue. Uh, to our island, uh, it also uh, our infrastructure, our, our government, and we must w uh, work together uh, with the federal and with the military, uh, because again, at the end of the day, if there's something that happens or war, uh, we, we surely need them. So yes, I truly uh, support the military buildup. Yes, okay. Mr. Servino. I also support the military buildup. We need to build our economy and build our Section 30 funds to help build our infrastructure here in Guam. And look at, again, the partnership that exists between the military and the community. They're always out there volunteering. I know they came out to Dededo just several weeks ago, helping us fix up the park, the Veterans Park. So we need to look at, again, that partnership and build upon that and expand and foster that relationship because they're an asset to our island. Well, I'm just concerned about the negative impact that we may have, especially after hearing about all the things that happened in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So we need to ensure that that doesn't happen here in our island. Okay. So this next question is, uh, what political status uh, do you support? And, and please explain, explain. Of course, you have independence, statehood, uh, free association, or status quo, which, of course, many have said is not an option. But uh, starting with you, Mr. Blas. Okay. On, on that issue, actually, I still stand limbo. It's something that we really still need to consider. I don't really think our island is prepared to um, run our own government and not being under U.S. and being independent. All, all three uh, sections of that topic are very sensitive and I think we just need more time um, and the voice of the people, but uh, we just have to rest assured that we, were, we ourselves are really ready to run our island um, without the federal and on on all three areas, they're very sensitive at this time. So still so undecided? I, I, yeah, I'm undecided right now and still in limbo. It, it really takes more time. Okay. It's been a long time subject. For sure. Mr. Yes. Spino. You know, for me, I'm really torn between being independent and having that freely associated state uh, status. Um, coming from California, where I've lived there for over 30 years, mm -hmm. and losing the ability to, again, elect our own president and feeling like second-class citizens returning back to Guam is very insulting. And I, I think it's in time that our people start looking at a new type of political status that will give us the self-determination that we need. And again, I, I'm sure the federal government look at, will look at us as a strategic point and invest into our, our island if we look at that approach. Mr. You know, I'm running for senator. I will go for independence because, you know, I want to I wanna decide the destiny, my, my, the destiny of my own island, my own people. 
You know, it's going to be hard for us to get into independence. It's going to take a long time. But I think we need to think about that because we need to decide on our own, like our tax laws and everything else. And every time we want to change our laws, we have to go to U.S. Congress. And U.S. Congress is not always in tune with us. Okay. And, and so this next question, um, if I can scroll up here real quick, I uh, know it had to do with the uh, ice problem on Guam. This is coming from a Cruz Williams asking the ice problem on Guam, obvious evident here on Guam. So what are you going to do about it if elected into the 35th Guam legislature? And we'll start with uh, Mr. Salai. Okay. You know, I've been in charge of the narcotics division. And I know how to counteract in making sure that we don't get these drugs on our island. We need to have this law enforcement cover the ports of entries, and we need to have a lot of undercovers. When I was in charge of narcotics uh, division, I have like 100 undercovers and what we call CRIs, credible, reliable informants, and that's how we eradicated heroin at one time. We eradicated cocaine at one time. That's because I have so many people working for me. Mr. Servian? I totally agree. We need to look at law enforcement and building the capacity of, again, monitoring the ports, the airports, and um, building the capacity of our staffing. You know, there's not enough manpower, again, to monitor all this. And we need to ensure that we have agencies like Customs and Quarantine that have the capacity to enforce this and monitor it and track it. All right. And Mr. Boss? Yes, uh, you know, this, this topic is very sensitive. It's, it seems to be growing. It's an epidemic. It's like a cancer. And so with that said, I really think that we should start educating our young uh, children uh, in, in, in schools, you know, about this kind of epidemic happening. Uh, a lot of them are finding that their option or solution is to go that route. So many are, are really giving up sometimes in life and taking this route of, using that or even selling to, to live. Um, so there's, there's just so many problems with this and it keeps growing, but I think we just need to emphasize education okay. um, on, on what will happen and what it, How it, to go it, forward yeah, and it will destroy uh, okay. their lives. So it's right. not the answer. So thank you for those responses. All right, now you each have 30 seconds to wrap up the show uh, with your final pitch to voters on why they should vote for you. And we'll start again the way we did at the beginning of the show with Mr. Blas. Yes. Buenas and half a day. I'm excited in this um, election. I still have the heart, the passion, and the love for our people. Um, I've worked in the legislature for 24 years, also including the executive branch, and I've gained knowledge, experience with the many senators, approximately about 10 of them, that I've worked for. And it's all just about helping people, resolving issues and doing the right thing and working together in the Guam legislature. And I can assure you that if I'm elected, I will work with all el elected uh, uh, senators in this upcoming, ele um, rather, up upcoming election, and that uh, it's all about just resolving to making our island, our people, and our government better. Thank you, and God bless. And Sister Vino. Off a day, people of Guam, Again, my name is Benito Santos Servino, running for senatorial candidate for the 35th Guam Legislature. I want to serve as your, the voice for the most vulnerable. It uh, includes the early childhood population, the youth, the people with disabilities, the Manumku, and the veterans. I want to go in there and advocate strongly for their needs in the legislature. Okay, and Mr. Chalai. My name is Jose Tobis Terlai. The combination of my education going to six years of college with the different organizations that I have built, my finance company, my, my retail and wholesale businesses, I think I can you know, prove myself to, to, uh, to improve the quality of life for all of us on this island. So please vote for me and I will do, I will listen, my voice down at the legislature will be your voice. I will do whatever you need me to do. All right. Well, thank you all, and best of luck in the yes. August primary. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, stay tuned. The after party is next. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style.